Greetings and salutations, my fellow math enthusiasts and students of all things mathematical. My name is Sean Spartan, and this video will be about field extensions and the hyperreals. If you haven't watched my videos on group theory or field theory, I recommend it, because some of the topics discussed in those videos will be relevant here in this one. I will put links in the description. First, a short review. A field F plus star is a mathematical object consisting of a set F and two binary field operations plus and star such that F forms an abelian additive group and F minus the additive identity forms an abelian multiplicative group where multiplication distributes over addition. Some well-known examples of fields are the rational numbers Q, the real numbers R, and the complex numbers C. The quaternions H is an example of a skew field, that is, H satisfies all field axioms, but multiplication is not necessarily commutative. So now let's define our terms. A field extension is a pair of fields E and F, and I will be using this notation throughout, such that F is a subset of E, and the field operations of F are the same as E restricted to F. So we say that E is a field extension of F, and F is a subfield of E. So basically F is a smaller field that sits inside or is embedded in E, and the field operations are the same when we just look at elements of F. Example, let's look at two fields we've already seen, C, the complex numbers, and R, the real numbers. C are all numbers of the form A plus BI, where A and B are real, and I squared is negative 1. We can see that R sits inside C by letting B be equal to 0. If B is 0, we just have the real numbers. Furthermore, C can be thought of as R with the number I adjoined, and it is written as C equals R with the I in parentheses. If a field extension can be expressed in this way, it is called a simple extension, and the number i is the generator. Let's take a look at some other simple field extensions. Recall that the rationals q are a subfield of r that contain numbers that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers. Since the square roots of integers that are not perfect squares are irrational, they are not in q, but we can create a simple field by adjoining them. For example, q with root 2 adjoined is a field and simple extension of q, as is q with root 3 adjoined, and root n for any integer n that is not a perfect square. To show this, consider q with root n adjoined. If n is a perfect square, then we're left with just q. So we'll assume n is not a perfect square. Then to demonstrate closure, we need to show that the sum of two elements in Q, root n, are also in Q root n, and the products of any two elements in Q root n are also in Q root n, and this is shown here. Now what if I wanted to adjoin not only root 2, but the real roots of all finite polynomial equations with integer coefficients? This also forms a field extension of Q that is a proper subfield of R. We call this the field of real algebraic numbers, which I will denote with an A. Just as the word irrational is used to describe real numbers that are not in Q, we have a term called transcendental numbers, which describes real numbers that are not in A. In other words, real numbers that are not algebraic are called transcendental. Pi and E are famous examples of transcendental numbers. So now we have a pretty good picture of fields and their extensions. If I start with the rationals, I get the algebraic numbers as an extension, then the reals, the complex numbers, the quaternions, the actonians, etc., etc. But the problem with creating fields by basically copying the real number line in higher dimensions is that when you get to the quaternions, multiplication is no longer commutative. This makes the quaternions a skew field. Even worse, when you get to the actonians, which is an extension of the quaternions with twice the number of dimensions, you even lose associativity. So you may ask the question, can we extend the reals without increasing the number of dimensions simply by adding new numbers to the real number line? And the answer is yes. One such extension is the hyperreals. 
The term hyperreals was coined by mathematician Edwin Hewitt in 1948, who made significant contributions to the theory. The hyperreal numbers, denoted star r, form a field extension of the reals with the number omega adjoined. Now, omega is a transfinite number, which is a number larger than any finite number, and its reciprocal epsilon is an infinitesimal, which is smaller than any positive real number. And also note that omega times epsilon is equal to 1. This opens up the real number line not only to transfinite numbers, but for every real number, and actually for any transfinite number as well, there are little tiny islands of infinitesimals called monads surrounding it. We call the hyperreal number without the infinitesimal part the standard part. So for any finite number r, r is real if and only if r is equal to its standard part. So are we done? Can we extend the hyperreals further? How far can we go? Is there a largest field extension of the reals and hyperreals, and what would that look like? There actually is, and we call it the surreal number system, but I'll leave that for a future video. That's it, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment.